Ever wondered about the cost of progress in one of the world's most dynamic economies? South Korea, globally recognized for its rapid industrialization and prominence in the technological scene, hides behind its success a reality of intense social pressure and high expectations. In this video, we'll dive deep to explore how these factors make South Korea one of the most stressful countries in the world. We'll unravel the pressures for academic and professional success, shaping the lives of millions and examine the impact of these demands on mental health and the balance between work and personal life. By watching this video, you'll gain insights into the complexities of high-performance societies and learn valuable lessons on balancing success and well-being. Have you ever faced similar pressures in your life? This is the time to reflect on these questions and discuss strategies for facing a world where success often exacts its toll. Join us in this detailed analysis and transform your perspective on success and mental health. Welcome to the Fascinating Traditions channel. Here, we unravel fascinating secrets and explore the incredible world around us. Don't miss out on the discoveries. Subscribe now, activate notifications, and embark on this knowledge adventure with us. The economic transformation of South Korea, known as the Han River Miracle, is a phenomenon that propelled the country from one of the world's poorest nations in the post-war era to one of the most advanced and wealthy economies in just a few decades. This impressive growth began in the 1960s when the South Korean government implemented a series of economic policies focused on heavy industrialization and export. Major conglomerates, known as chables, such as Samsung and Hyundai, were crucial in this process receiving extensive government support to develop and compete in international markets. This rapid economic development brought significant changes to the country's social fabric. Cities grew at a dizzying pace and urbanization forced millions of people to leave the countryside and migrate to urban centers in search of work and better living conditions. Seoul, the capital, transformed into a vibrant and densely populated metropolis, symbolizing the country's success and the promise of a better life. However, this transition also brought challenges, such as the rising cost of living, overpopulation, and economic disparity among different segments of society. At the heart of South Korean culture is an extreme value placed on hard work and dedication to success. This work ethic is taught from an early age and is deeply ingrained in the national identity. The country's economic success is often seen as a direct reflection of this mindset. However, the pressure to maintain growth and success can be overwhelming. Workers face long hours, with extensive overtime being the norm, not the exception. South Korean corporate culture often expects its employees to prioritize work above almost everything else, including health and family life. The consequences of this pressure for productivity and success are felt throughout society. Despite economic prosperity, many South Koreans experience high levels of stress and anxiety. Mental health issues such as depression and anxiety are growing concerns, especially among the young. The pressure to achieve academic and professional success can be overwhelming, leading some to burnout before even entering the workforce. To address these challenges, it is crucial for South Korea to find a balance between maintaining its economic growth and promoting the well-being of its citizens. Initiatives to reduce working hours, promote greater work-life balance, and provide better mental health resources are important steps in this direction. By adjusting its approach to prioritize both economic success and quality of life, South Korea can continue to be an example of prosperity while also becoming a leader in promoting a healthier and happier society. Education in South Korea is a cornerstone of society and is often cited as one of the reasons for the country's rapid economic development. However, the South Korean education system is also a source of immense pressure for students. From childhood, young people are subjected to intense educational demands with the aim of preparing them for the university entrance exam, the Sunyang, which will largely determine their future careers and social status. The Sunyang is more than just a test. 
It is an event that can define a young person's life. Preparation for this exam begins early, with students attending regular schools during the day and supplementing their studies at Hagwans, private academies, late into the night. The result is an exhausting routine that leaves little room for leisure or personal development. The pressure to perform well is so intense that the exam day is accompanied by national adjustments. Offices open later to ensure smooth traffic for students, and flights are prohibited from taking off or landing during the listening segments of the test. This ongoing pressure results in high levels of anxiety and stress among students. Many report feeling overwhelmed by the constant expectation of excellence. The excessive focus on academic outcomes has been criticized for sacrificing the mental well-being of young people in favor of educational achievements. Additionally, the system tends to emphasize memorization at the expense of critical thinking and creativity skills, which may limit students' ability to adapt to environments outside the academic context. Recognizing these issues, some schools and educators have sought to implement changes. There is a growing movement to diversify teaching and assessment methods, introducing more project-based learning and teamwork. These approaches aim not only to reduce student stress, but also to better prepare them for real-world demands, balancing the focus between achieving high grades and developing essential skills. Furthermore, the South Korean government has promoted educational reforms aimed at reducing the centrality of the Sunyang. This includes expanding holistic admissions in universities, where factors beyond exam scores are considered. Such reforms are essential for alleviating pressure on students and guiding the education system towards a more integrated and less exhaustive model, contributing to the development of healthier individuals who are well-prepared to face life's challenges. The corporate environment in South Korea is known for its extreme demands, reflecting many of the pressures seen in the education system. The expectations of long working hours, extreme dedication, and a strong corporate hierarchy create a scenario where the balance between personal and professional life is often challenged. These characteristics are evident in the work practices of the chables, the large conglomerates that dominate the South Korean economy. In many of these companies, it is common for employees to work well beyond the standard working hours, often extending into late evenings, with the implicit expectation that they will dedicate their lives to the company. The pressure to perform and climb the corporate hierarchy can lead to a work culture that values the quantity of hours worked over quality or efficiency. This not only increases the risk of burnout among workers, but can also have a significant negative impact on physical and mental health. The South Korean government has taken steps to address these challenges, such as implementing the 52-hour workweek law, which aims to limit working hours and promote a better balance between work and personal life. However, changing an ingrained corporate culture is a slow and complex process, and many companies continue to operate according to old norms, especially in less regulated sectors. In addition to long hours, the South Korean corporate environment is also characterized by strong competitiveness. From recruitment to promotions, the pressure to outperform colleagues can create a highly competitive and often stressful environment. This competitiveness is a direct reflection of the education system, where students are constantly evaluated and ranked. In the workplace, this translates into a constant struggle for recognition and job security, which can be exhausting. However, there are signs of change. Some companies have begun to recognize the importance of caring for employee well-being. Wellness programs, flexible work policies, and the promotion of a more collaborative and less competitive work environment are being implemented by some of the largest companies in the country. These changes are seen not only as beneficial for employees, but also as a way to increase productivity and job satisfaction. This transformation in the South Korean corporate environment while still in its early stages, is vital for the long-term health of the economy and society. By promoting a better balance between personal and professional life, and by valuing the mental and physical health of employees, South Korean companies can significantly contribute to reducing stress levels and improving quality of life, aligning more with global trends in human resource management. 
South Korean society, deeply influenced by Confucian values, values family harmony, respect for hierarchy, and academic and professional success. These values shape parents' expectations for their children, often from a very young age. Children are encouraged to excel in their studies, aiming for admission to prestigious universities, which is seen as an essential path to a successful future. This pressure to achieve academic excellence can lead to a high level of stress among young people, who often sacrifice their leisure time and mental well-being to meet family expectations. With the increasing participation of women in the workforce and changes in gender roles, expectations for women in South Korea are also in transition. Traditionally seen as primary caregivers for the family, many women now balance professional responsibilities with domestic demands. This dual role can be a significant source of stress, as social expectations still favor a gender division of responsibilities, where women continue to take on a disproportionate share of household and caregiving duties, even while employed full-time. Modernization and globalization have brought significant changes to South Korea, challenging some of the traditional cultural norms. Exposure to Western ideas and lifestyles, for example, has encouraged a greater appreciation of individuality and work-life balance. However, the tension between new ideas and traditions can create intergenerational conflicts within families, where young people may feel torn between pursuing their own aspirations and respecting the wishes of their parents and grandparents. Despite growing awareness of the importance of mental health, seeking help is still often stigmatized in South Korea. Many individuals are reluctant to seek treatment for fear of being seen as weak or unable to cope with their responsibilities. This is particularly prevalent among men, who may feel additional pressure to conform to expectations of being the primary financial providers for their families. To address these challenges, various initiatives are being implemented. Schools and universities are beginning to emphasize the importance of mental health, incorporating education on the topic into their curricula and offering counseling services for students. Non-governmental organizations and public campaigns are also working to promote greater understanding of mental health issues, encouraging a culture of support rather than judgment. However, there is still much to be done to improve the support resources available. Expanding mental health services in communities and workplaces can provide easier access to treatments and counseling, reducing the stigma associated with these services. Government initiatives that promote inclusive mental health policies and support families in managing social pressures are crucial steps forward. Ultimately, it is essential for South Korean society to continue evolving in its understanding and treatment of mental health issues, balancing respect for traditions with adaptation to new social paradigms. This includes challenging expectations that lead to stress and burnout and creating an environment where people feel they can seek help without fear of reproach or discrimination. This change will not only improve individual quality of life, but also benefit society as a whole, making it more resilient and adaptable to change. In South Korea, the rise of digital technologies has significantly reshaped social interactions and the mental health of its citizens. Social networks like KakaoTalk, a ubiquitous platform in the country, have transformed the way people communicate, offering convenience and instant connections. However, this same ease also brings challenges, such as the pressure to be constantly available and heightened social comparison, which are common sources of anxiety and stress. Young people, in particular, find themselves navigating a world where their online presence can be as significant as their offline life, impacting self-esteem and expectations of personal and professional success. The entertainment industry in South Korea, especially the world of K-pop and television dramas, plays a central role in defining standards of beauty and success. These often unattainable standards are perpetuated through highly curated media and can create intense pressure on individuals to conform to specific aesthetic and behavioral ideals. This culture of perfection not only affects young people's self-image, but can also lead to obsessive behaviors and eating disorders as they strive to mirror the images they see on screens. 
Technology addiction is another growing concern, particularly online gaming addiction, which is so serious that the South Korean government has implemented a shutdown law for games, banning access to online games for minors under 16 at night. Excessive smartphone use is also prevalent, with many young people and adults spending hours browsing digital content without face-to-face -face interaction, which can contribute to social isolation and decrease social skills. Furthermore, the increase in telecommuting, accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic, has brought new dynamics to the balance between work and personal life. While remote work can offer flexibility and reduce commuting time, it can also lead to what is known as telepressure, where the boundaries between home and work become blurred. This can result in longer working hours and greater difficulty switching off from work, increasing the risk of burnout among professionals. South Korean society is on the threshold of a cultural paradigm, trying to balance the benefits of digital connectivity with the challenges it presents. Education on healthy technology use, Robust public policies and support programs are essential to help citizens navigate this digital environment in a healthy manner. Ultimately, it is crucial to foster open dialogue about mental health and promote a culture that values well-being above visible achievements, adjusting to an increasingly online world, but one that still values deep human connections. While South Korea continues to thrive economically, the human cost of this success is significant. This video sheds light on the complexities of South Korean society and questions the balance between economic success and personal well-being. Changes in the workplace, the educational system, and mental health care are essential to improve the quality of life for South Koreans. We want to hear your opinion on this complex issue and your own experiences with balancing work and personal life. Comment below, share this video to raise awareness about these issues, and subscribe to the channel for more in-depth analyses on current topics. Click on the video that appears on the screen and venture to the next country. Thank you for watching, and until the next adventure.